Hi, I'm Tankfish, and I lost part of my soul playing this game. Welcome to Anime Fighter Simulators. It is essentially the abomination that will have been birthed if All-Star Tower Defense, Anime Fighting Simulator, and Beast Swarm Simulator had an orgy. It inherited all the bad DNAs. It's like Starfire's f***ing daughter, except she's abandoned. It's got a shitty gacha system, grinding that makes you want to kill yourself, anime, intense clicking that gives you carpal tunnel, and the most brain-dead gameplay you will ever experience. You enslave some anime dudes to fight some other anime dudes to make money. And all you do is click and watch your slave friends, your friends, fight while sitting on the sideline commentating like some Dragon Ball Z side character. I have lost 99.9% .9 of my brain cells staring at a screen and mindlessly clicking for over a thousand hours. God even gave me an achievement for that. <laughs> Every day, I come out of my closet and play anime fighter simulators. The voice tells me to. The voice is up. The voice is grinding. I find the biggest dude on the map, click on him, and f*** off. Since the game is playing by itself, I finally have some time to go outside and touch some grass. I then enjoy my luxurious meal, then realized after taking one bite that the fish was f***ing expired. <laughs> Six hours later. It's time to go back and check on the progression. So I went down and do some. As you can see, after years of training, my right arm is a lot stronger than my left. After the workout, I went outside and took a cold shower. Then I went in the kitchen to beat my meat. It was kind of hard and it broke my hand. To heal my injury, I went to bed. Every day I come out of my closet and play anime fighter simulators. In this game, you enslave some anime dudes to fight other anime dudes and rob them of their life savings so you can get stronger anime dudes to fight other stronger anime dudes. As always, due to copyrights, all the characters have scuffed names. But unlike other anime games that at least put some efforts into it, you know, making the names kind of funny, sound similar, or a shitty reference, this game's dev just straight up pull shit out of their ass or use some random name generator to name most of their characters. The fighters are segregated into rarities. It's kind of like a slave market because it is common rare epic legendary mythical crafted secret and divine those are the tiers and higher tiers usually deal more dps and that's pretty much the only thing that matters in this game fighters from higher tier world will generally deal more damage which creates some weird power scaling that makes this submissive and breedable cat fanboy stronger than saitama this also means that every time the game updates your maxed out fighters basically become obsolete and you're forced to go back to the grind to get the newest more powerful fighters. It's kind of like buying a graphic card. Two years ago, I bought a new RTX 2070, then a month later, RTX 3070 came out, which is more performant and for some f***ing reason cheaper. Now after two years, I finally saved up enough money from flipping burgers in McDonald's to buy a RTX 3090. Then right after I bought it, Nvidia announces RTX 4090, which is three times better, and guess what? Has almost the same f***ing price tag! And the bad and outdated fighters can be sold back on the black market market or used as biofuel, kind of like graphic cards. Anyways, the damage of your fighters doesn't scale linearly, it follows the formula E equals MC lift. For example, a fighter at level 1 will deal 100 damage, but at max level, it's just a big number that's so big that nobody actually know what it means. The devs could have totally chosen the letter randomly and said that it's a big number and we wouldn't know. Ultimates are basically just a regular attack on steroid, they don't provide any special effects, it just hits the guy harder and has an animation, which triggers your neuron activation to secrete dopamine. In fact, the animation is a waste of time and the tryhard sweats will try to manually skip it to do more damage. Your click damage is determined by your fighter strength. It is basically the mechanic that makes the player participate instead of just ordering the slaves to fight for them. Mythic units and up can be limit broken by sacrificing two of the same unit to be able to level up talents to level 20 and have two passives instead of one. It's basically a bootleg Genshin constellation. Finally, if you don't like the look of your fighter, you can go to the illusionist and tell it to cosplay another unit. I like to tell the big burly man to cosplay as fanboys. And also, you can change their name to some unfunny memes. Have fun. 
You got tired of clicking on LEGO Anime Man? Don't worry, there are game modes. Now you can click on LEGO Anime Man, but it's timed. Tired of that as well? You can also click on BIG LEGO Anime Man, but before you can click on him, you have to click on SMALLER LEGO Anime Man. Don't like that? You can click on MOVING LEGO Anime Man. Want something else? Uh, you can click on LEGO Anime Man in a maze. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So that you always feel challenged to click on LEGO Anime Man, all these game modes come in different difficulties. You got time shards from Time Trial, which is used to buy tickets to access the other game modes, and a bunch of random sh** like the trading license. Yeah, bruv, you need a license to trade. Quite sat in it. You get raid shards from raids that's used in passive reroll and fighter crafting. From defense, you get multi-open stars, which is basically an item that lets you open chests faster so you don't spend your entire afternoon sitting there opening opening gotchas, and you get a little bit of everything in the dungeon. Yeah, it's just- it's a dumpster fire. The gacha in this game is like overdosing on alcohol, you know? A little bit of gambling is fun and exciting, but holy sh**, rolling for 50 million times might be a little too much. In fact, you will do so much gacha that there's a f***ing stat that determines how many unboxings you can do at the same time. You use yen to roll, and the higher tier of the world you're in, the more expensive it is to do so. This is called the pen effect, and it is the reason why child labor in third world country is a thing. You can also use bow bucks in some worlds to do gacha, but don't do that, that's a scam. Worst bull box I've spent in my life. The gacha rates are, um... Yeah, it explains why I have 50 million rows. There's pity in this game, but just for the secret <laughs> rarity fighters, the devs decided to add a secret pity potion that you have to drink in order to activate pity for secret fighters. This was simply just a dick move that did not have to be done, but they did it. To make your life easier, you can automatically sell all the unwanted children who don't meet the minimum SAT requirement. Some of your fighters will have a higher starting talent level, better passive, and uh, autism. Or you can just use the talent machine to level up your talent to max, shiny machine to make them special, and passive roll to get better passive. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It will just cost you a lot of tokens, shards, and possibly both of your kidneys. Normal crafted fighters can't use this shiny machine because that will mean less grind for you, and the devs would never allow that. To reroll passive, there's the passive machine and the requiem passive machine, which is basically the better, more expensive version. Since the RNG is dog sh** and you're expected to sit there and roll for like two hours straight, there's the auto reroll system to ease the pain where you can pick the passives you want and the machine will automatically do the job until you get them or until you've gone broke and have to file bankruptcy to the bank. Thousands of years of human evolution led us to f***ing AFK gotcha. So yeah, just go watch my videos when you're rolling. Easy. Now that I think about it, making people wait an eternity to roll for sh** is actually pretty smart because this means the player technically have to play the game for longer. That means more money for the devs and better ranking for the game. Take note people, take notes! Finally, the game doesn't give you an accurate description of what the passive does. Draconic. This fighter keeps a horde, like a dragon. What the f*** does that mean? What does it do?! There are boosts that give you temporary buffs like better devious licking or more damage. You get these from your dailies and from the time shot shop. Upgrades gives permanent buffs and you get most of them by completing achievements. There are a shitload of them so have fun grinding. Your fighters level up not from fighting but from committing cannibalism on other fighters or go in the incubator to Amimir, which you can level up with yen for faster level ups. You also get badges for completing world quests to get 10% bonus yen and mount speed. Most items can be exchanged for player XP if you want more free sh** from your daily rewards. With fruits, you can increase your fighter's talent because fruits are rich in vitamin or something. It also costs fruits to use the shiny machine to make your fighters special. You get them from space, rocks, dungeons, or buy from the fruit merchant who isekai from blocks fruit. Since fruits provide way too much advantage for the player because it negates the RNG, just to make it a little bit gay, the dev separated the fruits into different tiers. Now you have to use the proper tier to upgrade your fighters. You can fuse them though, so it's not that bad. Now, it Roblox Simulator cannot be complete without some very homosexual microtransactions. This game straight up offers a built-in auto-clicker for click damage. And even better, more lux. Motherfuckers actually selling better RNGs, bruh. Also, what does one luck mean? Am I getting like 1% more luck or is it like, what the fuck is this, deep luckin'? And of course, you get all the usual simulator cash grab game passes. Two times yen, two times XP, two times loot, two times dick size, bigger basement, and cosmetics that provide gameplay advantages, you know, the usual, that all the other grindy games have. Uh, and the Robux item shop. Don't buy from the shop, dude's scamming you. 
Just like Bee Swarm Simulator, the pain in this game is immense and without limit. Again, I have spent over a thousand hours and 7k bulbucks for my life saving on this game, and I'm still nowhere close in achieving maximum power. The saddest thing is, when the next update comes out, my whole build might just become irrelevant and I'll have to grind all over again. I think the only way for the best to stay as the best is to find the creator of this game and send a hitman to assassinate him so no more updates will be made. <clears throat> Apparently the game won't receive bi-weekly updates anymore. I think while I was writing the script, the game creator hacked into my computer and got scared. That's why he decided to slow down updates and lay low for a while. Wake you start up. in the first Wake world up. with your first sla- Friend. And you beat the sh out of a few people who are just standing there minding their own business. In fact, while you were beating them down, they were crying for help and were not able to retaliate. After committing manslaughter, you run their pockets and with the new sto- earned money, you get new sl fighters to go kill people faster until eventually, you unlock the next world and do the same thing all over again until you reach the last world. My tip for the newcomers is to speedrun all the worlds until you get to the last one. Then you can go back to the previous worlds to complete the quest since you will be able to one-shot everything like some isekai protagonist. After reaching the last world, you can finally start min-maxing and try to get the best team comp which is basically a team full of divine fighters. Now, what's the odd of getting a divine? For the average player who has around 10 luck, they have 1 in 20 million chance of getting one. And there's no pity for divine. But wait, there's more. Remember about limit breaking? Yeah, you need two other divine units to limit break. You have 10 slots, or 7 if you're poor. Meaning you need 21 to 30 divine units for a perfect team. I rode for like a few weeks straight to get the 5 divine units I have. So, uh, have fun. Also, when the game adds a new divine, yours basically become obsolete. Yay. Of course, you still have to level up your fighters, reroll for better passives, getting shinies, upgrade talents, and completing achievements. That means you will have to grind for all the other game modes as well. It's recommended to go in the time chamber when you're using the incubator since time goes faster there. Uh, now that I think about it, it doesn't make sense though. Time is relative. If the incubator is in the time chamber and you're outside, then yeah, it would incubate faster. But that's not the case. If you're in the time chamber and the incubator is outside, wouldn't it be slower? If you bring the incubator with you in the time chamber, then there wouldn't be a speed boost because time is the the same. There's a big ass immortal masochist there that you can beat up for player XP though, so I digress. Finally, every weekend this game gives yeah, buffs, so you should probably play during then if you want to grind. It's one of the way the devs make the player number go up since the game is so f***ing boring. Why am I playing this sh Oh god, my math homework is more fun than this. So yeah, good luck. And if you're dirt poor and can't afford game passes or Robux upgrades, I give you all of my condolences. Man, with all this grinding, I'm not even close to the leaderboard. I don't know if I should feel happy that there's more people who actually have a less of a life than me, or sad that I wasted so much of my time in this game that I'm in the end game. My brothers in Christ, did you spend your life saving on this game? Motherfuckers in the end game be having more yen than the entire Japanese economy purely from robbing people. Your dad would have came back home from buying milk, and GTA 6 would have been released, and you still wouldn't have gotten the best team. To be honest, I don't see the difference between 69 Y damage and 420 Y damage, brother, you one-shot these people either way. And then the next update hit and you have to grind all over again. I rate this game a I would rather fist fight Goku than playing it again out of 10. That's it for Anime Fighter Simulator. Subscribe, like, and comment E or I'll... Uh, you know, I just want to go to sleep, man. Fuck this shit. I hate this game. Why am I doing this? Fuck, the game's dead.